have no idea what or why I'm looking. Before I show you this, I, I need to explain something. My name is Michael and today I'm going to show you how I made these concrete steps. They are very easy and fairly inexpensive to make. And I'm going to show you some pretty interesting things that happen along the way. We're going to do some experimenting. Let's make something cool. Well, some of you may recognize these steps from the Cementol video when I tried to resurface them with uh, Rapid Set Cementol. Uh, tried to buy myself a few more years out of these guys and did not work. I think these steps were just a little bit too far gone. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking, but it was not the Cementol that failed, it was the steps. If you look real closely, the Cementol, it hung on real good to those steps, see? Cementol still attached to that piece real well, but uh, the rest of this piece is all step. So you know what that means. These steps, gotta go. <laughs> that was awesome. a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the shed and make some molds. Speaking of sheds, if you don't know the story behind this beautiful building behind me, please watch this video. Now, if you don't know anything about Weaver Barns, they will come right out to your property, build you a shed on site, or have the shed pre-built in their factory and just roll it out and plop it right on your property. They even came out with a new model this year and they're calling it the Grill Shack. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you purchase a Weaver Barnes shed, I get absolutely no kickback, but I wanna sweeten the deal. If you buy a Weaver Barnes shed and have one built on your property and use my name, I will personally make you a personalized concrete plaque of your very own but you're probably gonna have to let me know about it because Matt has absolutely no idea that I'm doing this. Let's build some molds. All right, making these uh, tombstone-shaped molds uh, is not gonna be as hard as it looks. Uh, we do have to make two of them, though. One big one, one small one, obviously. Now, obviously, we're gonna be using malamine like we usually do for these molds, but we're also gonna be using this thin, whiteboard material. It's got the same coating as malamine, only it, it's thin and flexible and bendy. Uh, laying out the curve can be a pain in the butt, but uh, here's some of the things I did to make it easier. I measured out and marked the sides first. Those gave me my two reference points. Then, of course, you want to mark out your center point. That's your third reference point. I then clamped down some scrap blocks at the ends, 3 16 which is the thickness of my bending material, away from my marks. I then took my whiteboard bending material, then simply bent it to my center point at the peak, and then lightly mark it out with a marker. Then uh, cut that shape out with uh, your jigsaw or a bandsaw. Now, depending on how good you are with one of these, you might have to smooth those edges out with, like, say, a belt sander or something. Then your base is done. Then you want to rip all your sides at two and three quarter inch to make up for that two inch thickness of your project. Cross cut them to size. And as far as the angles are at these two corners, on the big guy, the angle came out to be about 25 degrees, and on the little guy, it came out to be about 27 degrees. After you attach all three sides with inch and a half screws, then that's when you're going to attach your whiteboard sides. If you are going to be using an edge mold, make sure to leave a gap for any excess to run out the back double-sided mounting tape for the edge mold. And just uh, stick your edge mold on. 
I'm going to have plans available in the description below for purchase for both with and without the edge mold. I am going to seal up this back corner as well as this big gaping gap that we have in here with 100% silicone. Now, if, uh, if you don't know my handy dandy glass cleaner technique, then uh, link up above. Let's just take this project just one step further with a little compass design. All right, so I'm about to draw our compass design on the mold with a pencil. Obviously, this is completely optional. You don't have to put a design in if you don't want to. Again, I will have the dimensions for the compass design available for purchase in the description down below. But before I draw this, ever since I can remember, I've always loved compasses. And part of the reason for that is life is just, I mean, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Direction. It's all about direction. So I incorporate compasses in a lot of the things I do. But that's why I got this tattoo of a compass on my forearm. But you know who gave me this compass? My niece did this tattoo for me. She's an aspiring tattoo artist and she is phenomenal. So if you live anywhere near southeastern Michigan, click on the link below and make an appointment with her. I, I, I am so proud of her. She's going to be very famous one day, so make sure you get your tattoo now before she's famous. But if you're not looking to get a tattoo, please visit her on her Instagram and show her some love. She's got some fantastic work for you to thumb through on her Instagram. So get on there and pound on that like button. And while you're getting your tattoo, have her text me. I want to see. I'm excited. By the way, I'm learning very quickly that it would have been a lot easier to do this before I put all the sides on. All right, so uh, this next step uh, is gonna be fun because I have no idea if it's gonna work or not. It, it's, it sounds good, it looks good on paper, uh, but we're about to find out. So we can put a design in our concrete a number of ways, but I wanted to give the illusion that we have grooves in our concrete by making V-shaped silicone tracks, I guess you could say. So I cut my tip at an angle like I usually do, but then at the very tip, I cut a V shape, but I didn't want to touch the bottom portion because I want that to ride along the surface of the mold. Does that make sense? So uh, let's, let's try this out. <laughs> Seems to be working so far, not bad. Not as V shape as I want it to be, but I think it's gonna work. I might have to clean it up here and there, but no big deal. Just remember when you're done with a line to release the pressure. I keep a rag handy. <laughs> we, st we, 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 st we still don't know if it's gonna work or not. So I can, I can definitely see that I am gonna have to clean up some of these intersections and lines with a razor blade after it's cured. Um, some of them I might even wipe up right now and redo. But other than that, not too bad for our first time, right? Hey, that's what experimenting is all about, right? What? Don't worry, I'm still a rapid set guy. Just changing it up a little bit today, do some experimenting, that's all. Part of the experimenting that we're going to do today is I get comments, questions all the time on whether or not the Rapid Set Flow Control, Rapid Set's plasticizer, will work with a regular Portland base like Quickery. I have no idea, and I never know how to answer that question, but we're about to find out. The answer is yes. It will work with a regular Portland-based cement. As far as what that does to the strength and what it does chemically, I have no idea. Alrighty. I 
just realized that I didn't spray it down with WD-40. <laughs> Got ahead of myself. Buy another three bags and we'll be all set. Now let's reinforce it. And then we'll mix up some more slow creep. I mean quick creep. All right, so since we're working with a Portland base today, we are going to have to let this sit for a minimum of at least three days before we can demold this guy. Then uh, in the meantime, I'm going to cover this with plastic. I am gonna to have to babysit this for the next couple of days and keep it moist, keep it wet, basically water cure it. And then we'll go from there and see what we get. I, I, I honestly don't know what to do with myself because I'm used to being able to take these out of the mold in one hour. This is seriously the heaviest. She's coming, she's coming. Come on. Oh my god. What is this? What happened? I have no idea what or why I'm looking at. I have no idea what I'm looking at and why. Before I show you this, I, I need to explain something. I did not color this at all. I did not put any colorants. This is just plain old concrete. It's black. Pure black. I I mean, I mean, it looks cool. I just can't explain this. It had to have been the flow control that did this, though. It had to have had some sort of weird chemical reaction. Uh, future Michael here. Just wanted to let you know that I did do some test pieces without the flow control. Still came out with a dark finish. Uh, I have a feeling that the Quickery 5000 just comes out dark when you form it up. All right, so. The mold did what I wanted it to do. The silicone stayed in place after we demolded it. Now we know that we can repeat this probably as many times as we want. Well, until the mold deteriorates anyway. But now you can put steps in your backyard, in your front yard, on this side of the patio, on the other side of the patio, on the front of the patio. <laughs> if you got a shed, you can put it in front of your shed. Okay, the only thing I would do differently is I would probably use a straight edge to make these lines straighter. That's it. All right, now we're going to lay our first course of retaining wall block. You can pretty much use whatever retaining wall block you want, uh, but if it has that lip, you don't need that. You don't want that. So go ahead and chisel that off with a masonry hammer or a regular hammer, whatever. Now at both corners, I did cut them at a uh, 45 degree-ish angle. I scored them with a simple, cheap mason blade on an angle grinder. Now you can get the same thing done with a chisel and a hammer, it's just gonna take you a lot longer. As far as how I laid them out, uh, I actually used the mold as a template. I laid it down, scribed it with a pencil, and set these back one inch because I want a one inch lip from the step. As far as this big empty space here, typically you would fill this with earth or debris or whatever. Now it just so happens you can, you can fit exactly four of these in the middle. They're very cheap, very inexpensive. It'll probably just make it so much easier for you to just buy four more bricks and put them in the center. Now me, I've got plenty of debris left over to go ahead and fill in this space, so that's what I'm gonna do. I honestly don't think or don't know how necessary it is to put construction adhesive down before I put the top on, but I guess I'm just doing it for a little added insurance. This top is heavy. It ain't going anywhere. Then we can just place the first step down.
What do you think? I'm gonna wipe this down, let it cure and dry for a little bit, and then we're gonna take some tasty B-roll of this thing. Aside from the discoloration, which I'm gonna call marbling, I don't think it turned out too bad. The technique is definitely gonna need some tweaking, but uh, I'm gonna leave that up to you. So don't forget to post your versions of these concrete steps on Instagram, hashtag MichaelBuildsCommunity. I can't wait to see your take on these steps. Before I forget, I did seal these with the Simple Coat Sealer. I'm very curious to see how this does on exterior concrete steps. So now I will say I, I'm not 100% sold on the Quickcrete 5000 because I was really missing my rapid set and mortar mix on this project, but we'll see. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. I promise you won't regret it. And I'll see you in the next video.